Our first book, The Geography of Bliss, as I said, was a bestseller, and it focused on something completely universal, happiness. How did you get from happiness to God? Well, two ways. One was in my head, and the other was in my heart. The head part was when I was researching Geography of Bliss, I kept coming across this one statistic over and over again, and that is this. People who are religious are happier than people who aren't. And this is consistently true in study after study. And I thought, well, why is that? What do the religious know that the rest of us don't? And what explains this happiness boost? The hard part was really uh, a crisis, a medical emergency. Um, I developed these sharp shooting abdominal pains and reluctantly went to the hospital. So I'm scared. And a nurse walks in. And she must have smelled my fear because I was reeking of fear. And she leans over and she whispers in my ear these words I will never forget. Have you found your God yet? Those were her exact words. And the truth is I had not really looked for God up to that point. I was raised um, Jewish, but really a gastronomical Jew. Bagels, lox, gefilte fish. If we could eat it, then it was Jewish and had something to do with God, maybe. But that was about the extent of it. So it was that question, and I should add, I, I, I was okay. I was not dying. And... When I decide I'm going to answer her question, have I found my God? I, I looked at the sort of the, the smorgasbord of religions out there and discovered it, it is huge. Okay, I mean, it, it's not just a salad bar at Pizza Hut. This thing mm -hmm. is, is large. There are, do you know how many religions there are in the world? I would guess some few hundred. 9,945. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of religions. Uh -huh. And I narrowed it down to eight, a sort of a cross-section of the religious world. Um, some monotheistic ones, uh, relatively mainstream, like Judaism and Christianity. Some polytheistic ones, like Wicca. And some basically uh, atheistic religions, like Buddhism and Taoism. Religions in every sense of the word, except they don't believe in a, in a god or a supreme being. It was a list that appealed to me, uh, and then I set off to dive as deeply as I could into each one. And I found that belief wasn't the main criteria uh -huh. for, for these faiths. Um, people, a Buddhist doesn't care what you believe, he cares what you do. You know, are you meditating? What's your practice? What do you experience? And the one thing that I found common across all these religions was the emphasis on a sense of humility. Uh -huh. The idea that we are, we cannot do this alone. That there is something greater than us, call it God or the Buddha mind or suchness or whatever you want to call it, but it's this idea of humility that I think we've largely lost in this country. And but I was convinced by some deeply spiritual people that it makes sense to have a foundation. And I sort of settled on what I call a kind of Ikea God, some assembly required. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that, you know, you have a foundation, but on top of that foundation, you can add some Buddhist meditation. Yeah. You could add some Qigong from Taoism. And why not have a, to use another metaphor, a kind of mixtape of God? I, I don't have a Hollywood ending for you. Okay. I conclude that the nurse's question, have you found your God yet, wasn't exactly right. It's not you've reached the station, end of the line. It's a process and it continues. Rainer Maria Rilke, the Austrian poet, once said that God is a direction. And I quite like that because mm -hmm. you don't arrive at a direction. Um, you don't find a direction, really. You head in a direction. And I think there's, there's some truth to that. That's great. Well, Eric, thank you so much for coming here today. Thank you, Carrie. Um, available in bookstores now, Man Seeks God, My Flirtations with the Divine by Eric Weiner, published by 12 Books. <laughs>